What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Welcome to your second stimulus check update, stimulus package update, and stimulus news report for Thursday, January 21st. Today is the day. Today is a very big day because now we have a new president, we have a new vice president, we have a new administration, and, and we have a new majority in the Senate. Democrats now hold the majority in the Senate, which means Mitch McConnell is now the minority leaner leader in the Senate. And Chuck Schumer is the majority leader. So this is going to change. Democrats now hold the power. They now have the power in the presidency, the House, and the Senate. This is going to be big. And what we see over the next two years is going to be big and it's going to be bold. That's exactly what Nancy Pelosi and Kamala Harris have said, that this will be big and this will be bold. Last night, over 85 million Americans were celebrating the new administration, but many were left wondering, where's my $2,000 stimulus check? Joe Biden has been in office for hours. How come I haven't heard anything about my $2,000 stimulus check? Well, I wanna address that in today's video. I wanna give you some new insights and new updates as to where we stand and what we currently know. Now. What most of America was left wondering last night was simply this. What's next? What is next for us? What is next for the American people? What is next for smaller businesses? What is next? Well, here is what we know. President Biden signed multiple executive orders yesterday. Now, I will get into this in a different video uh, because a lot of these don't really pertain to stimulus in any way. So I will do something later on to really address these because right now I specifically want to address stimulus. Where is it and how can you actually get some help? So in addition to President Biden signing multiple executive orders, 17 to be exact, the Biden administration gave a press briefing and this gave a lot of insights as to what we are potentially gonna see moving forward. This is where Jen Psaki let us know exactly what we can expect. One of the things that Jen Psaki said during her press briefing was, it was kind of a slam on Kaylee McEnany when she said she will not lie to reporters and then she came out and you know there were some lies. But she pretty much just said that transparency is back in the briefing room. That was pretty much what she said. And here's the cool part about what happened yesterday. We haven't had a press or a White House press briefing since like December 15th. So over a month ago, we had no clue what was really happening for about a month. And this is why I am pretty excited. Uh, not, not really about the new administration or, you know, the you know Senate being controlled by Democrats or anything like that. You know, yeah, some people are, some people aren't. I'm excited about the press briefings because for me, that's big. And I'll explain why in a little bit. But here's what Jen Psaki said when she was asked by a reporter, is the Biden administration willing to compromise on the $1.9 trillion stimulus package? Well, here's what she said. She stated that this was the compromise and she was almost dumbfounded. Like, what do you mean? What do you mean compromise? This is the compromise. The $1.9 trillion is the compromise. She was pretty much saying that they didn't write this proposal to then pick it apart and leave bits and pieces of it out just so that other things can get some stimulus and some relief. And then the things that still need it, like state and local government funding, which was left out of the last one, she was saying, that's not why we wrote this proposal. This proposal was written to meet the needs of the American people and provide an economic recovery. That's why they wrote it. So they don't plan on negotiating this down, but they do want to get input from Republicans. They want their input from Republican lawmakers to see what priorities they would like. So based on what Jen Psaki is saying, is this package can get better. It's not gonna get cheaper, it's not gonna get lower, it can get better, it can go up. So we will see what happens. But even Bernie Sanders said this exact same thing. But he also went as far and said that if I have any say in this, 
we will not be waiting months and months or years to provide relief to the American people. And Jen Psaki said, and I quote, we're at the beginning of the process. Rarely does it look exactly like the initial package that is proposed. So, and that's true. That is very true. I just want to reiterate this is no matter who proposes a bill, when it goes to the other side, when it goes to, you know, the rest of the caucus, it, it does get changed. It does get altered. Sometimes it's the amount. Sometimes it's just the language. Sometimes it's the duration of the stimulus. But bills rarely ever look exactly the same as they are proposed as when they are passed. So we will see. But at the same time, here's what you need to understand. Republicans, there are multiple Republicans that are not on board with this. A couple, again, are, and this is going to go on for as long as, as long as we have these stimulus negotiations, Republicans are going to come out and say, no, it's too much, too soon, or we don't need it. Democrats are going to come out and say, it's too small, we're waiting too long, and we've needed this for months. They're always going to bicker. At the same time, we have senators like Mitt Romney and Lisa Murkowski who are not in support of such a large stimulus package at this time. Mitt Romney said, and I quote, We just passed a program with over $900 billion in it. I'm not looking for a new program in the immediate future. Then we have Lisa Murkowski, and she said, The ink is just barely dry on the $900 billion dollar stimulus package, and what the president is proposing is significant, $1.9 trillion. It's going to require, I think, a fair amount of debate and consideration, which is true. Well, what we know is that more and more Americans are losing their jobs. We cannot wait. Over 400,000 people have died due to this pandemic. We cannot wait. Businesses are closing daily. And even though in the first week of having the PPP funding out, just this week, we've already seen over 500, over five, excuse me, five billion dollars of funding go out. That's big. But again, businesses cannot wait. Something has to change and it needs to change immediately. Yesterday, and this is something a lot of people uh, were arguing in the comments about, but yesterday, I mentioned that some lawmakers are calling on this $1.9 trillion stimulus package to be split, to be broken up, and pass certain pieces of legislation on their own. Then take the, the bulk of the package and push it off to you know deal with it you know sometime in February or possibly in March. Well, a lot of people were a little upset by that. I, I'm sorry. That is not me. That's not my idea. This is coming from multiple lawmakers. I'm just here to provide you updates. I try to keep my advice and my you know, perspective and my feelings out of it just to give you the facts and the updates from lawmakers, Congress, and from you know our government or our government officials. Right now, they're saying just pass only the essentials now and then let's come back later on and we can negotiate or renegotiate another deal. But here's what we know, that Democrats did this with the $900 billion stimulus package. This was their compromise. This was their down payment, according to Joe Biden, on what is yet to come. So they did this. And now Republicans are saying, you know what, we need to, why don't we just pass a, a, some small stuff? Let's just pass some little things here and there, maybe some additional vaccine distribution funding. Let's just pass that. And then we'll get to the rest of the stuff later when it's when it's needed. And Democrats are like, no, we did this. We just did this a couple weeks ago. We did this what, like three weeks ago. We passed what we could, and then we decided we'll wait. And when we do get the Senate back, which guess what they did, then we'll we'll renegotiate more, and we'll get what we want. And so that's what we're hearing is Republicans right now don't really have a leg to stand on. They fought and fought and fought, and now. It's time for them to pay up. They pretty much lost this battle. Many Americans are still fighting for their $600 stimulus checks. And this is a big issue. The IRS has been riddled with delay after delay. And now some are being told that their $600 stimulus check, that second stimulus check they were promised, well, they're going to have to wait until they file their taxes. And then the IRS comes out and tells us just earlier this week, 
that we're a little bit behind, we're a little bit backlogged. So due to this pandemic, we're just gonna delay the, the filing of taxes to February 12th. Again, some people cannot wait, but this is what lawmakers are fighting for. This is what they're fighting for. It's not just a, an additional $2,000 check, additional $1,400 check. It's not that. It's unemployment benefits. Maybe even providing assistance to the IRS to fix their system. Some have proposed that. State and local government funding, vaccine distribution funding, school funding for you know, proper ventilation. It's all there. Everything's there. Additional rental assistance to the tune, I think, of $30 billion with a rental, with an eviction moratorium all the way through September 30th. President Biden already did an executive order last night to extend the federal eviction moratorium. That's great. But then what happens once we reach that deadline? It has to be pushed back again. Well, this is where Congress steps in and this is where they do their job. What we know is that this means there's going to be more benefits. This is going to benefit a lot of people. Right now, they are saying that and this is specifically coming from multiple lawmakers, we need to provide for those that have been badly impacted, negatively impacted, for those that are currently suffering more than anybody else. This means the benefits that are coming are gonna be coming to those that are currently unemployed, to states that can't afford to keep their employees working and keep them on payroll, to families that can't put food on the table or keep a roof over their head for rental assistance to those that are in need and funding for small businesses that are struggling to keep their doors open. Last night was not only a night to remember for millions of Americans, for 85 million Americans. Y'all remember last night as well. However, to, for me, the most refreshing thing about yesterday, again, I'm not, I'm not pro Trump, I'm not pro Biden. Yeah, I try, I'm trying to stay right in the middle just to provide the facts. I'm not, in tr Trump, he's he's done, he, he's done. He's not really anything now, he has nothing to do with what's going on. So we're not really gonna talk about him, but I'm not pro-Republican or pro-Democrat. I try to stay right in the middle, I try to see things through my eyes. And what I can tell you is it was really refreshing last night to finally see, after over a month of not having him, a White House press briefing. And I say this because this these press briefings are something that I always look forward to because I learn more about COVID, learn more about the vaccines that we were developing. I learn more about uh, stimulus and I learn more every single day. When I watch a press briefing, this helps me decide how am I going to invest if for my short-term investments, how will I invest in the stock market? How will maybe, how will I invest in real estate? Is there something coming down the pipeline that I need to be aware of? Do I need to know what's happening in the economy? Yes, you do. If you're an investor in any way, you need to understand what's happening, not just in your city and in your state, but around the country. And that's one of the things I really liked about what Jen Psaki did last night or yesterday afternoon. She, she just made it a little bit, I felt like a warm feeling, like, okay, this is, this is good. This is finally, we're getting some some clarity about what's going on. So I don't know how you felt. Let me know down in the comment section below. If you got a chance to watch that White House press briefing, did you feel, well, I wouldn't say excited, but did you feel like, okay, you know, we're now getting some transparency back to the press brief or the briefing room. According to Jen Psaki, that's what she said. So whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or something else, doesn't matter. Let's just hope that this administration does what they have set out to do and unify this country, but at the same time, take us back to the to our lives pre-pandemic. If they can do that, I'd be grateful. I would be grateful because I know a lot of people right now are struggling. I hate seeing, I hate driving down the road and seeing tents you know, on the side of the road under trees. Hate seeing homeless people living on the side of the road hate seeing it, but that's currently the, the world that we live in. So now I know over the next few days, we and next few weeks, maybe even months, 
we are going to have update after update after update and just information overload from this administration. At least that's what I'm expecting because the Biden administration and specifically uh, President Biden and Vice President Harris have said that they're going to do something different. They're going to be bold. They're going to be aggressive. So I would assume in order to get the American people that voted for President Trump, get them on their side, they're going to have to step it up in a big way. So that means they're going to be transparent. At least that's what I'm guessing. They're going to be transparent. They are going to be just very upfront and give us the information that we need, the facts. So we will see. But if this happens, I promise you're going to see a lot more of me. I might have to do more videos. Hopefully that's not the case because I still do a lot of videos on other channels as well. So if uh, I do more videos, great. If not, and if you have questions on anything, please ask your questions down in the comment section below. Just want to thank you guys for watching. Consider subscribing so I can continue to keep you updated on everything that's going on. Again, I just want to thank you guys for watching, supporting me here on this channel. But again, you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you guys on the next one.